I will start with um, uh, reminding all of us of uh, something uh, W.E.B. Du Bois said at the beginning of the 20th century. He said uh, the key problem of the 20th century uh, will be uh, the problem of the color line. Uh, paraphrasing him, uh, it's possible to argue uh, uh, nowadays that uh, uh, the key problem of the 21st century will have to do with uh, uh, who is able to move, uh, who should only move under certain conditions, and who shouldn't move at all. Um, it will be uh, the problem of uh, how is it that um, we, uh, we share the Earth and we share the planet through uh, the capacity or the inability uh, uh, to circulate uh, throughout the planet. So I, I will start by uh, suggesting that our world is, is going through um, a moment for which there doesn't yet seem to be a, a proper name. And uh, since naming our time is part of what is at stake, I suggest that in the midst of the current dread and confusion, one thing at least is clear. Ours is a time of planetary entanglement. We are more than ever before at any other time in human history exposed to each other. Uh, worldwide, the uh, combination of fast capitalism, soft power uh, warfare, and the saturation of the everyday by digital and computational technologies has led to uh, the acceleration of speed and the intensification of connections. But uh, entanglement is not all that characterizes the now. Indeed, wherever we look, the drive is simultaneously and decisively uh, towards contraction, it's towards containment, and towards enclosure. Typical of this triple logic of contraction, containment, and enclosure is the erection uh, worldwide of all kinds of walls and fortifications, gates, and enclaves. In other words, various practices of partitioning space, of offshoring and fencing of uh, wealth, of splintering territories, of fragmenting spaces, saddling them with various kinds of borders. And various reasons are mobilized to account for these renewed infatuation with borders. Security is one of these reasons. And as it happens, physical and virtual barriers of separation, digitalization of databases, filing systems, development of new tracking devices, sensors, drones, satellites, and sentinel robots, uh, infrared detectors, and various other cameras, uh, biometric controls, uh, and new microchips containing personal details, everything is put in place to transform the very nature uh, of the border in the name of security. Everything is uh, uh, put in place uh, to turn the border into a mobile, portable, omnipresent, and ubiquitous reality. <laughs> the goal is to better control movement and speed, accelerating it here, decelerating it there, and in the process, sorting, recategorizing, reclassifying people with the goal of better selecting anew who is whom, who should be where, and who shouldn't, all once again in the name of security. As a result, borders are no longer merely lines of demarcation separating distinct uh, sovereign entities. Increasingly, they are the name we should use to describe the organized violence that underpins both contemporary capitalism and our world order uh, in general. But perhaps, to be exact, we should speak not of borders in general, 
But instead of borderization, that is the process by which certain spaces are transformed into uncrossable places for certain classes of populations who thereby undergo a process of racialization, uh, places where the lives of uh, a multitude of people judged to be uh, undesirable are literally shattered. Whatever the case, the technological transformation of borders is in full swing, and in a sense, one of the major consequences of the acceleration of uh, technological innovations has been the creation of a segmented planet of multiple speeds. Um, when you carry uh, an African passport, uh, like some of us do, uh, you, uh, uh, you don't need to explain uh, in details uh, what, what I'm talking about, the, uh, the, uh, the emergence of uh, a segmented planet of uh, multiple speeds. Now, um, that's the first point I wanted to put uh, on, on the table for uh, our discussion. I have a second point I would like to share, uh, which has to do, and Max uh, expanded on it, so it allows me to not spend much time uh, talking about it. Why is it that the body, I mean, we say the body, but certain bodies, certain categories of bodies have become so central in the new uh, border calculus, which once again is, is a planetary uh, uh, development. This uh, has been happening partly because part of what we are witnessing is a bifurcation between life on the one hand and bodies on the other hand. We used to believe that uh, life and bodies were more or less the same. They pertained to the same uh, 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 calculus or entity. This is no longer uh, assured. Not every body is taken nowadays to contain life. I say everybody in both terms, every body and everybody in one single, single word. Some bodies are taken to contain no life as such. They are, strictly speaking, lifeless bodies. They contain, if you want, the kind of, of life that is not insured. This disentanglement of life from certain categories of bodies, I think, is a key uh, dimension both of contemporary migration regimes and of contemporary forms of capitalism, in particular in those parts of the world where extractive forms of capitalism are uh, dominant. Those bodies that are not insured are tracked, captured, sorted, and recorded. Whatever life they have is turned into uh, data and there's the development of all kinds of machines that allow for an immediate uh, calculation uh, of uh, movement. So um, the, um, it seems to me, too, that uh, border security practices have taken a keen interest in the connection between the human body and identity, uh, partly as a means of achieving detailed control uh, of, a, of a movement. What is at stake uh, in the extension of the biometric border into uh, uh, multiple realms of social life, and in particular, the human body? What is at stake is the, uh, the, the, uh, the dream uh, of, of finding out, uh, and once for all, who is whom. Uh, it's the dream of, uh, of uh, neutralizing ambiguity. Uh, of getting rid of ambiguity one, once uh, for all. And in that sense, biometric technologies are supposed to, to fragment uh, the human body in order to recompose it uh, for the purpose of securitization. Uh, this is the case because the human body is still seen as an indisputable anchor 
to which data can be safely uh, secured. Uh, uh, as a result, we are witnessing a, uh, an extending intertwinement of individual uh, physical characteristics with information systems, uh, a process that has served to, to deepen uh, faith in data as a means of uh, risk management and, and faith in the body as a source of absolute identification. We can come back to, to that later on, but this seems to me to be a key uh, development. Let me now end with a third set of comments, uh, which have to do with the dream of perfect security, which, which is fueling uh, a lot of what we, we are seeing. The dream of perfect security requires not only complete systematic surveillance, but also a cleansing policy. This dream is symptomatic of the structural tensions that for decades have accompanied our transition into a new technical system of increased automation, one that is uh, uh, complex, uh, yet uh, also increasingly abstract, uh, as, as we know. And here, it seems to me that some key issues are at stake. Uh, one of the major contradictions of liberal order has always been the tension between freedom and security. Today, this question seems to have been cut in two. Security now matters more than freedom. <coughs> question is that uh, a society of security uh, is not necessarily a society of freedom. A society of security is a society dominated by the irrepressible need for ad adherence to a collection of certainties. Uh, it is one fearful of the type of interrogation that delves into the unknown and I think the risks that must surely be contained within. This is why in a society of security, the priority is at all cost to identify what lurks behind each new arrival. Who is who? Who lives where? With whom? And since when? Who does what? Who comes from where? Who is going where? When? How? Why? And so on and so forth. And moreover, who plans to carry out which acts, either consciously or unconsciously? The aim of a society of security is not to affirm freedom, but to control and govern the modes of apparition and the modes of arrival. The current myth claims that technology constitutes the best tool for governing these arrivals, that technology alone allows for the resolution of this problem, which is a problem of order, uh, but also of identifiers of anticipation and predictions. It is feared that the dream of a humanity transparent to herself, stripped of mystery, might prove to be a catastrophic illusion. For the time being, migrants and refugees are bearing the brunt of it. In the long run, it is by no means certain that they will be the only ones. Thank you very much.